Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon, and welcome to the bonus jackhammer edition of the Weekly Dub. And uh, I don't know how extremely dumb this is. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. Our uh, participant on the week is our good buddy Wiley, and uh, I didn't think this up with my own addled brain. Uh, my buddy was over a couple days ago, and out of nowhere. I guess because he was thinking about the weekly dump. He just turned to me and he goes, how hard is it to put a front axle on the back and a back axle on the front? And my first thought was like, why would you do that? And uh, because, you know. Uh, so in this impromptu edition of Can It Crawl, a Can It Crawl forklift edition uh, the rear steer, and uh, if you, anyone who remembers back to the build process of Wiley, uh, the way that the coyote comes from the factory from Charisma is literally backwards. So he's now backwards again. So his, his crawling at the extreme is going to be really bad because we learn. I think we learned together. Equal length links. Equal. Wow. Equal length links. Say that five times fast. Uh, makes for complicated handling. Like the, the vehicle, like say Element Bushido has the same length. Length links. Man, I cannot wrap my mouth around that. It has the same lengths front and rear. The way the coyote comes is it has longer links in the front and shorter links on the back. And what we learned from that round of testing was that that really doesn't work. Uh, it drives fine, trails fine, you can't really tell the difference. But when you get to any sort of extreme in attitude, like anything above say 45 degrees of climb angle, it just doesn't like it. Like the way the links load and unload, it unloads the front and overloads the rear and it gets all squirrely. So we're kind of in that same situation again because Wiley the Coyote, we also learned this, is completely symmetrical. Uh, all I did was reverse the steering on the servo, reverse the throttle pull on the speed control and flip his body around because his body posts are, and, and wheels are fully symmetrical. He has the same front and rear overhangs. So he is effectively now, as he came stock, but rear wheel steer. It, uh, it is really difficult to, like, I can't, I can't make my brain do it right even though the steering is reversed, I feel like the steering is double reversed, if that makes any sense. Because I'm looking for the front wheels to turn and the steering effectively turns the wrong way. Like if I turn the wheel to the right, the wheels turn to the left. So you have to reverse, so this, like, are you, are you following here? The, the steering is reversed. So I can't look at my hand, nor can I look at the rear of the vehicle because then my brain goes, that's not right. You're turning the opposite direction of the direction that you're supposed to be turning. And this, this definitely puts a bit of a hamper on directionality and positionability because we we do a lot of much much like in a car how the brakes in the front of the car do like 80 percent of the work sometimes more same with bicycles same with motorcycles pretty much any vehicle the front brakes are doing 80 plus percent of the work i am i'm rapidly coming to the conclusion that in a rock crawler in terms of actual, like what we're doing right here, crawling up, ascending, let's let's phrase it as ascending. 
in terms of ascending, the front wheels are doing 80% of the work. And now we've moved the point of steer. Yeah, see, we just steer. We just, we just side glide because the front end gets really light. So the weight transfers to the rear. So what we're doing here is we're transferring all the weight onto the steer axle. And as someone in the comments uh, told me, and I have adopted it fully because I'm still not super comfortable driving four wheel steer. And, you know, a lot of it is non-intuitive to me. I'm actually kind of hoping that this, this little bit of nonsense, this little bit of nonsense will I don't know, make it more clear to me to drive four wheel steer. Basically, I, I don't, oh, okay. See, oh, th there it is right there. I didn't, I didn't, I was like, I can just use the transmitter and flip it around and drive and then you'll see what I mean. But you don't even have to do that. When the weight transfers and loads that rear axle, it just renders the front end useless. So I don't think that there's any amount of doing you could do. You would have to get the bias of front end weight up to like, I don't know, 80 plus percent. You'd have to put like those things that are on the front of pulling rigs, those giant weight blocks or are on, a, on, on an excavator or a, one of those big long arm cranes. You would need a massive pendulum like weight in the front to force the front wheels down because when we get to right here, ordinarily that's not a lift. The steering just, you, it's not steering anymore. It's, it's, we've installed glide function. You just glide side to side. And like I say, it all feels backwards to me anyway. So if we, uh, right, like you, the steering axle has got to be in the front. And even in four wheel steer, that rear axle is really only for positioning. Like you basically don't want to use it while moving unless you're like on stable ground, if not flat ground, stable ground, and you're just turning. You're just executing a sharp turn, like using dig. And I think this is why historically for me, dig has proven far more useful to me than four wheel steer. Because four wheel steer is very conditional and dig is very conditional. We don't need dig all the time. We don't need four wheel steer all the time. But I think that there's a utility to dig that isn't found with four wheel steer. And I think this is evidenced by the fact that I do, I, I so much want to make it to the top on rear steer. But you see, I have no, I have no forward drive. It, it's just taking all the bite out. Like I can't, I can't position the front end Oh, also your, your steering circle is, you know, uh, for those unfamiliar, a forklift has like, like it's like a drift car going backwards. Like the rear wheels turn a lot. And this platform doesn't have a ton of steering angle. And uh, some side notes, before we came out here to do this stupid thing. So here's what's, Here's what's really crazy about this. Wiley is reversed. For those who weren't here for the, the whole build process. And what I mean like that is here on the chassis, see this is the rear axle and there's the electronics. There's that arch, which would be over the front axle. But the straight is over the front axle because where the placement of the motor was and the orientation of the links, you can see that these links are longer than these links, like a good bit longer. These were all the front links. So I literally just took, I, I did what my buddy suggested. 
I took the back axle off and put it on the front and put the front axle on the back and didn't move anything else around. I didn't change the orientation of the gearbox, nothing. I didn't even reverse the gearbox. Ordinarily, the spur gear faces the back because this is the back. So I just flipped it around and then switched the motor rotation. So when I set him down right now with the rear axle to the back, the only difference is he's steering with his rear wheels. But from the factory, this, this is how this thing was set up, link-wise and motor-wise. We're just rear wheel steering. Can you make it without the body? A little, little bit of weight reduction. He's a quiet boy. Also, uh, to those of the comments who have been active in the comments over recent days, I was racking my brain trying to remember uh, who was fitted with what I call the the blue chrome motor, and uh, it's it's right in there. There there it is right there. The the N the NHX flavor of the Surpass Rocket 540 big uh, big block. 540 plus, I just call it the big block. Honestly, you know what this is? This is, to me, this is like, wow, that was pretty good on the self right. This is the, the, the rough equivalent of those like, very questionably useful training tools for like soccer or baseball where it's like a cord on your leg and you kick a ball and it shoots back to you or those swing trainers for baseball with the weight that slides down it's training something very specific and i think what this is training is when when i don't i can't speak for anyone else but when i'm crawling an obstacle my brain to my eyes to brain to finger interface, they work in a very specific order. And this is why, and uh, in, in intuitiveness, like they're looking for something intuitive. And a lot of what happens with these rigs on these climbs is to me not intuitive. So if you take a rig, if you have a symmetrical rig, or even if you don't have a symmetrical rig, flip the wires around on on your motor and reverse your servo and just try driving it rear wheel steer try it both ways try driving it rear wheel steer and then try driving it forward which is backwards so when i'm th this is something i never thought i would get to the weekly dumb has proven to be in this just its third installment something so helpful like i had everything has been a pleasant surprise so far i am i am enabled i i am capable now i am semi capable now these controls are reversed and i know that i have stated in the past that if a Oh, like let's go back to the 1080 G2 and how it has real car mode where you have to flip a button, you have to press a button and then this is forward and this is also reverse. So this is forward and then you flip a button and then you do this and then you're in reverse. And my brain was like, I can't do it. Well, ordinarily my brain can't operate inverted. I can't play a video game unless it's inverted. Everything that I'm doing right here, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, shattering the world here or anything, but this is all inverted. The throttle is backwards. I have to, I have to push forward. And then when we realize we're not gonna make it, we task switch back to rear wheel steer. I, I just, I, I just wish, you know, I wish for, for purposes of closing the circle. I wish I could get that tire to pull that ledge. Yeah, it's just so glidey. It's just so glidey.
I feel like this, this is some sort of tool. This is the swing, oh, my brain, my brain dropped out there just for a second and I, I reversed the steering. This is a swing, this is a swing trainer for driving. I, I wish I could say that it just glides over here as being something supremely dumb, but uh, we've, we've failed at even that. It's like, like, it doesn't work. You can't rear wheel steer a rock crawler, but you can like the crawling ability is significantly dampened. Uh, the links, for one thing, unless you were building something very specifically to crawl rear, rear wheel steer, where you sort out the links and everything. But I mean, even at that, I'm not. I I had that. That was that was gonna be that was gonna be a make. Oh, it is really easy to fall out of it. It is really easy to lose the like. You need laser concentration for this and ordinarily I'm splitting I'm splitting brain force between a lot of things at once and come on there's not there's not a lot of horsepower here so and I'm not I'm not talking about the rig if you get what I'm saying okay we got that clear nope it's just gonna unload now the only worry here is and what and what I will do here in, in in wrapping this up, I mean, how long can this kind of stupidity go on? Uh, I am going to uh, hit the controls and flip it back around and see if I've destroyed my ability to drive. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. You know, it does feel more natural. I thought I, I thought I had the good settled there. A oh, little loss there on the rear. Come on, come on, come on, buddy. Nope, that's a roll. That's a roll. If nothing else, I think Roberto mode will really. It's like a. Uh, it's like a throttle finger pressure trainer. Because I have a tendency to up, apply beans. I think I've gotten on the stuck on the exact same spot a dozen times. I also, right before coming out here, I noticed his steering was jogged over to one side. And when I looked at it, the stock knuckles are made out of like a, what I assume to be like a hard licorice because I could just bend them at will. So I dug through the bins, found the high clearance front steering blocks that were on the Vanimal until he broke his drive shafts and had to be switched over to just some no-name front drive shafts. Installed them on here, had to find the hat bushings, had to find all the stuff, ended up taking like 40 minutes to find all the parts and get that front end installed. And honestly, what it does, is it provides more clearance, yes, and it provides more effective steering. I had to have my endpoints dialed out much farther, further, much further on the, with a 24 millimeter horn. And with the high clearance, there's no room for it. You have to switch to a 16 millimeter horn like this, but I mean, it's very clean. And I went to a Traxxas, little skinny boy, had to make a new link. It's just, it's much cleaner. I can hold that with that hand. It's much cleaner and you get, you get full throw at just 100% of, you know, EPA set to 100% in both directions. Now, what it doesn't do is change anything. Like when that, when that top carbon fiber bit, when that bottoms out into the axle, we still have the exact same amount of steer angle that we had before. So it does 
I mean, obviously you see it moves that steer link up in super tight and up above the pumpkin, which is where we want it. The one that was on here before was absolutely beat because it hung down so low and it stuck out so far that it just caranged into everything. So certainly his approach angle will have been improved and it has like right here, we would have just skated that, that drag link, that tie rod right up over those rocks. But now it's tucked up super tight. So, oh, right there for sure. Yeah, this, this is a good upgrade for this axle, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually give you Boy, that body, the stout, the good old stout, man, is the stout good for sticking. He will stick and get stuck. But the high clearance steering, and I believe, if memory serves, it is sold as high clearance steering. And it is that. It performs superbly. It pulls that thing so far back. To me, I put it right there in, in a category, right alongside the, the shackle flip for RC four wheel drive, uh, where you move the, the flexi shackle up to the front and then the rear is hard mounted because then it makes the, the leaf spring move back when you're breaching an obstacle. So your, your climbability gets a lot better. And the climbability on this guy got notably better, much like when I completely reversed him but the axle, the DNA of the axle is what is going to prevent us from getting more steer angle. Also, the this uses a CVD style. So I don't know, maybe if we tried forklift mode on something with a lot more steering angle, you know, SSD Diamond Pros and F10s, Axles like that will get up to that like 49, 50 degrees. I don't think these hit 45. So you, you, you have to learn to adapt your brain to this thing's steering. Yeah, if I don't actively pay attention to how I'm pressing the trigger, like it's 50% reverse, we've got full forward. I, I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm riding a missile. I, I, I don't know why that is. That's a 20 turn five slot, which is basically like a 45 turn and it still feels so quick. I don't even think I can go down in pinion. So forklift mode, who thought that that would be useful? Like what a great idea for a weekly dump, but I didn't expect to glean anything from it knowing that it wasn't going to work but again, not knowing why, like I couldn't, without doing it, I couldn't have stated why, oh yeah, that's not gonna work and here's why. Well, I can tell you absolutely why now. Uh, we operate, ascending is reliant on the ability to manipulate the non-loaded axle. So we need to be able to do this. We need to be able to steer the front axle because it's light. Uh, which is why, yeah, descending, what happens if you do this while descending? Well, you get to flip over. So I guess I guess it should have been intuitive, but uh, we got there anyway. This is a, a more abbreviated installment of the Weekly Dumb. This guy has got a massive turning circle. Wiley and I and the man on the jackhammer, and you know who didn't mess up us? You for coming and watching, me for uh, uh, accompanying Wiley out here to test forklift mode, which actually it's like a swing trainer for rock crawlers. Uh, but you know who did mess up? I don't know, somebody, but it's the weekend, baby. And if you're running a jackhammer at eight o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, somebody messed up. Somebody really messed up. So uh, Godspeed to that guy. Um, I hope that the I haven't talked about... Uh, this is the weekly dumb. Let's talk about dumb things. At some point in the software update history of the Apple products, they have disabled external microphones. None of my external microphones work. So all of the audio that you're getting are from the four microphones that are built into an iPhone. Uh, I am working on 
obtaining and setting up some sort of alternative filming solution because uh, I need a noise canceling directional microphone otherwise the audio is terrible. So if you've been wondering why the audio has been getting progressively worse over the past couple of weeks, well that's why. And I double checked it and I tried it on two other phones and none of my microphones work on any of them. And what are the odds of like, I have lav mics that are just the little button of a mic with a clip and it has that little rabbit, I, I call it a rabbit butt on the end of it, the little poof. And it's just a cable that just plugs into the phone. That doesn't work. So clearly we've been software nerfed and I don't know to what end, but I am working on a solution and I hope to get back to at least better audio quality. The picture quality has always been fine. I've been hoping to get back to better audio quality. And hopefully in, in an upcoming installment, you'll just notice that the, the pictures and the sound have gotten better. And we won't hear that guy quite as much as we are. So bear with me as the sound gets worse and worse. And I will, uh, I will, I will see you again very soon. Please do like and subscribe. Those two options to you are absolutely free. Uh, channel memberships cost a pittance if you don't mind giving half of that money to Google. So in between now and when we meet again, please one and all do your very best. Have a good one, everybody. Uh, I'm going to let that jackhammer guy uh, continue his day and I'm going to go, uh, I don't know, back inside where things bite me less. <laughs>